Hello everyone, it is Tuasamir with another video. So I finished watching this show not all that long ago, and since I did, I thought it would be the perfect time to review it. So without further ado, let's review Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro is a slice of life romance comedy first aired on April 11th of 2021. Now my first impression of the show was that it was awfully similar to another show that I had watched a little while ago that being Rent a Girlfriend. Now they both share many similarities. Our main character is a shy guy, we have our main female protagonist as a love of interest, y you know how it goes. <laughs> um, however, I was pleasantly surprised with Rent a Girlfriend. It was actually really good in my opinion. But Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro is not as good. First of all, I'm not totally against the whole shy guy that's sort of a loser trope. I mean, it's alright, if done well, it can be good. However, this show takes whatever you've been told about that stereotype and turns it up to a hundred. This guy is the biggest loser I have ever met. Even in the mere presence of women, he loses his mind. This guy is lamer than lame. He has no game and constantly cries after some underclassmen girls mess with him. You know how sad that is? And at first, I almost liked him, you know? Like, he was kind of spitting. Talking about staying away from the girls that gossip. Like, dude, that's smart. But bro, he's such a loser. Sorry about that, my mic kind of peaked there, I'm not even sure what happened. But he cried in the first episode. Twice. Twice. He cried twice in the first episode. The first episode. Dude cries more than Takamichi, and it's a romance comedy anime, not even an action thriller or something where crying could be warranted. No dude, you're in the library being harassed by little girls and you're crying. <sighs> You've gotta be kidding me. It, it had to be a joke. And it probably was, but it wasn't really funny. On top of all that, the first few episodes were sort of a drag to get through. Especially the first, it definitely wasn't the foot you want to start a show on. Not to mention the fan service. Now, I myself am not really a fan of fan service. I usually just think it's kind of weird and it really isn't for me. I know some people really like it, but just not me. And I will say that there is too much of it. There are some genuinely cute scenes between them, but the relationship that they craft can get utterly ruined by the fan service and just make it feel wrong. That's not to say there aren't good moments because that's not true. The show can be really cute when it wants to be, same thing with the humor, it can hit when it wants to. There were moments when the relationship stuff brought a genuine smile to my face, or scenes that I thought were really cute and nice. But right as I would say that, or write stuff like that down in my notes, there would be a scene that would make me want to take it all back. The fan service definitely weighs the show down here, so in that regard, it's definitely a show with lots of highs and lows. And I can't tell if the show is satirical or not uh, during certain times. Like in some cases, it's obvious, but just during some parts of the show, it was so bad that it could become genuinely good in a way, which is honestly a plus. And I found a lot of the parodies they did really funny to the point where I almost wish the whole show was just a big parody. It poked fun at fantasy anime, isekai, and just a lot more, and I kind of wish the show was just a large spoof on the anime genre as a whole instead of whatever we got. Also, the intro is another one of those bangers. Seriously, it's amazing. Like, I don't know why it goes so hard, but I kind of was looking forward to it every time I watched an episode. Now, going back to the relationship, I did think it got better throughout the show. However, I really think Nakatoro carried. But that's how my enjoyment for the show went. It actually got better with time, because I took a break from the show for a few weeks and when I came back, I was actually really enjoying it. I found the jokes way funnier, I found the feel of the show to be fun, and I was honestly having a good time. Like the farther into the show, the more it dropped its fan service aspects and began to do more funny and relationship type things instead. But like I said before, right as I wrote that down, they showed some fan service again, but at least it wasn't as frequent 
And after my break, the main character got better for me as well. I just stopped self-inserting myself into his character and just accepted that he was an extreme loser and nothing I could do or say would change anything about that. And that's simply just how he was. It did make him way less relatable, but at least now I wasn't annoyed when he would do lame stuff. And going back once again, the music as a whole was pretty good at times as well. Nothing too crazy, but it did have its moments of being really good. Overall, the show definitely has its issues, but it also has some aspects that are really fun and nice. I would definitely say that the goods even out with the bads on this one. So I would call this a middle of the road anime and sort of the baseline for what I expect these types of shows to be like. So Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro gets a 5 out of 10. Definitely a show with lots of ups and downs. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments of your own, make sure to leave them down below. Trust me, I read them. Also, look at this graph. Okay. But as always, stay awesome, too awesome. Thanks for watching.